So it's my real pleasure now to be joined by Dr. David Adams. David uh, is the uh, father, grandfather of this uh, fabulous meeting. David, congratulations on 2013 Macho Conclave. Thanks, Randy. You know, I, as I was saying to you a minute ago, is that I, I was blown away two years ago. When, you know, I, I'll never forget the scene in that hotel room where you had 700 surgeons and they didn't move for two days and now you've outdone it. You've got more surgeons. I mean, it, what's, you know, it's tremendous work for you and your program to put this whole, your program committee to put this together. What's, what, what are your thoughts about it? Well, you're right. When we started this, Randy, we thought we were going to get three or four hundred people. And I remember that energy at the first meeting because we had over 700 doctors and around a thousand people there, which really surprised all of us. And I, so we had a pretty high bar this year. We do the meeting every two years. Um, I'm really proud of what the whole team has done, including the entire faculty and all the people that work so hard to put a meeting together like this. It's unique. There's 60 country here. There's 60, there, there are doctors from 60 countries here. Um, we have over 150 focused lectures, all targeted in one disease, right, mitral valve right, right. disease. So we really are covering every possible condition, every technique, every indication for surgery, every imaging modality. So for two days, people can come from around the world and, and really learn all the different strategies and approaches, and patients will win. That's the bottom line. So it's really exciting. I mean, I've, I've been, as, as I said, I was, I never been to an event like that two years ago and this is a this is better but I mean this this concept you're saying of bringing colleagues together from around the world and really focusing in on a condition a disease state you know where where do you see uh, the knowledge that they gain here where, where where do they where do they where do they go so they leave here what happens in in their homes or in their hospitals oh I, I think I think that no one can sit here for two days and not change their practice I think that just the lectures this morning talking about the pathophysiology of the disease, talking about imaging and guidelines. These are things that I think will be used in daily practice. And then I think the real magic of this meeting is you get all of the experts from around the world. Each one is championing their own technique. They all present them in the same two hours with discussion. And the audience basically can watch and pick and choose between all of them. And one of the points that I made this morning was blending your approaches. There's not one way to do this. And just like when you play golf, you could play golf with one club, but it's a lot easier with 14. Mitral surgery, you can repair mitral valves with one triangular resection a lot of the time, but it's a lot easier if you understand all the different shapes of incisions and all the different types of rings. So a meeting like this lets you come together and hear from the world experts, and then you can pick and choose what you're interested in and what matches your own patient population. And I think you made the, you know, you made the, the the very important point is that obviously the patients benefit, but but you you've been foremost in pushing this whole concept of you know the reference lab or the the reference hospital or really the outcome. So watching your quality, building that quality in, and that's that's some of what they're getting here. I mean, Randy, I think patients want narrowly focused doctors. I know when I get sick, I want a doctor that takes care of, of exactly what I've got. And again, we need general doctors like we need general general cardiac right. surgeons, but we also need experts for technically demanding disease. And I think that a lot of mitral valve disease, because it affects more than one aspect of the valve, requires special skill and special experience. And I think one of the things that we're seeing is this incredible energy to learn. And again, I bring that all back to patients. I think we have to be good educators, but everybody's here because they want to be a better doctor, not because they want to learn how to do some fancy operation. They want to take better care of patients. And I think that you know, this is a really important aspect of this being. It's incredibly important to the American Association for Thoracic Surgery. I mean, I think that you know, scholarship and excellence are the two words we always throw around with that association. And I think that's what hopefully everyone is feeling in this meeting. One of the one of the uh, gentlemen that we interviewed this morning that's not a physician said, you know, that the, the, the model of this, okay, so you have a two-day focus on state-of-the-art on a disease entity or a condition might be the way that we really ought to go about it. And
in the future with education in general. And that's that's really what you're saying as specialists. In that. I, I think so. And again, I think this meeting, again, you need different types of meetings. So there are some meetings where it's good to see the breadth of a specialty over two or three days. And it's also good sometimes to go and really have a narrowly focused meeting because then you tend to get surgeons or doctors that are more interested in that particular area. So I think they're all good. I'm, I'm very proud of what we're doing here. I think we have a long way to go in terms of the future. I'd like to add simulation. I'd like to make this more of a heart team meeting as right. opposed to a heart surgery meeting. So I think we have a lot of opportunities to keep growing this into a really important meeting in the specialty. I mean, you, make, you make a valid point. Two years ago, and especially today, when I was at the opening sessions, I was thinking, you know, It'd be fabulous if you had cardiologists or imaging cardiologists or anesthesiologists in here because I mean because it really is the team concept and what they would learn from watching what you all have been doing is phenomenal. And vice versa and I, and I think this year you know one thing I'm really proud of is, is Pedro Del Nido's involvement the president-elect of the ATS he's going to be our vice president he will be a president of the ATS he's really helped us a lot um, on the pediatric side this time so last time we had one session on pediatrics we've had three sessions on pediatrics and a plenary lecture, which was really one of the best plenary debates. So I think that, you know, we're, we want to make this really even broader in terms of its impact and the potential to learn and let the participants pick which thing they want to learn about. So this year we made a big effort in pediatric mitral valve disease. I think in two years you're going to help me make a much bigger uh, impact in the guideline and referral discussion, which of course you and I know we, we, we both share a lot of interest in that. So I think that's an incredibly important part of mitral disease, which is different because the patients feel well. Absolutely. So you really Absolutely. have to you really have to spend a lot of time discussing when to operate on patients, and, and the best way to do that would be with a whole heart team here. So let me ask you, you know, you're sitting here, you've, you've, you've seen this thing come to life uh, in front of you. What have you learned today? Not, you know, about the meeting, or what have you learned science-wise? You know, what are your thoughts? Oh, I, I thought today we, we've heard a lot about the mitra clip. So we've heard a lot about this technology that's not approved in the United States. It is approved in Europe. Um, I, I'm not sure that I'm convinced yet, but I think we've learned where the state of that field is and, and, the, and the data and the follow-up that we need to be more comfortable that and, what, and understanding what role it's going to have. I thought that the discussion this morning regarding pathophysiology, imaging, and guidelines really were, was was excellent. I thought Dr. Schaff gave a really a, a Super. superb talk today that really helps us understand the the role of volumes in ventricular function, both preoperatively and postoperatively. And again, I always enjoy the technical aspects here. You can always teach an old dog new tricks, and I'm I'm still watching and learning from all my peers and friends around the world how they do things. And I think. It's, all of us are doing the same thing. I'm sure we're all learning from each other. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's what's really unique is that you get these, you've got, you know, 800, 900 surgeons and you've got this cadre of really super experts and you really do get cross-fertilization if you watch what, I mean, you know, watching, talking to Tyrone, you had me talk to Tyrone about his experience. I mean, you know, for one person that, follow patients and you get you know just that experience of these guys must be incredible. Yeah, I think that's another very unique aspect is putting together this group of people on the panel at once. This is very unusual. And again, most of the time it's not a group of, of experts in a single disease. And that's why this has been very, very rewarding. And I think it's one of the attractions of the meeting and I think the ATS had tremendous vision to to do this, they, you know, we there there is an aortic meeting like this that the AATS also directs, and I think that I think there will be a congenital meeting soon. So I think that we're seeing the first of many specialty meetings, and, and again, what I hope is that we can expand this to a, a medical meeting to as team, well, a team, to a real a team, team, meeting, a team meeting, particularly in mitral valve disease. It is a team sport. You, you, you're so dependent on imaging as well in this field. You know, no doubt. And again, just as two years ago today, I'm just really struck by the, you know, just the, uh, it's almost like the energy. You can feel people, just the excitement of learning and being here and, and being involved in this, seeing old friends, you know, in a, in a very intimate uh, setting. So. You know, I, th I think you, you did a lot of hard work. I mean, this just doesn't happen. I mean, it's a lot. So but, it's, I mean, a, you got, it's a busy program. 
It's a lot of work for a lot of teams. We had 14 breakouts. We had three plenary video sessions, two plenary debate sessions, four breakfast breakouts, six symposium at lunch. And all of those have very targeted expert lectures by experts around the world. So it, it, it's, a, it's an effort that's worth it. It is, it is a significant effort. But again, that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm very proud that we have a lot of return attendees from two years ago. I think that the real strength of these meetings is that you, if you can get return registrants, that means that you're doing something right. And I think the other thing, Randy, you said, which I always remember you saying this for the first time in Japan when we were together at a meeting, that yeah, the friendships you make and the, and the, the partnership you have, both personally and as well as in this common goal of trying to be a better doctor is so unique. And I think that you can really feel it in here. There are a lot of people here that are happy to be together. And it's not just uh, the faculty, we, no, all no, get to, no, no. we all get to hang out with each other. I've seen so many you know, people from around the world that are just happy to be here learning today. And that, that's the most rewarding I thing. Saw, I saw an interesting thing, and I'll, I'll stop because, I mean, it's amazing here. We're almost 12 hours into the sucker, and they're still going. still here, still going. <laughs> <It's> going. <laughs> the fire marshal is going to come in and evict them pretty soon. But so I saw, I saw one, of the, one, of the, uh, one of the colleagues who you would know sitting one-on-one -on -one with somebody drawing on a thing you know and that's what you're saying this guy might or might never might not have access to this individual and there he was sitting drawing out things and you know uh, so and, and that's the kind of stuff that's priceless and i think randy this this opportunity to see bob Prater today talk about the yeah, the, the idea the the actual conceptual work and sheep that have led now to one of the most important strategies in mitral valve disease is just fascinating. And I think when you go back and, and read these old papers and hear and see this data, you realize that it's just, you know, the, the real pioneers are all are all behind us. We, we just have our job to implement what they've started. Well, but, but you learn, you learn. I mean, I'm, it, was, it was struck by him putting his finger in there and feeling the annulus and all that stuff. I mean, you're struck by how these guys were and still are sized and, and wanting to get answers and, and pushing forward. Well, I, I couldn't, I had to laugh when he got up and asked two or three probing questions during different talks today. Right. So in, in his early 80s, he's still trying to understand and still defend his thoughts. Well, it's, and that's, that's part of what all this is about. Well, listen, congratulations to you and your team. This is a fabulous turnout. And, you know, it, it, it is, David, you know, you live in this world, but I'm, a, I'm an outsider that comes into this world. This is a very unique educational event that, that does make an impact in not only how people practice, but in the patient's lives. So congratulations. Well, I, I, in my introductory slide this morning, I don't know if you were there for that, but I did have you listed on my card along with Giddy and Javier is one of my real partners, so you, you've been a tremendous partner. And Randy, I think this is the beginning. I hope this isn't the end. I have a lot of other plans for this, and if the IETS will hire us again for another round, we'll try and do it better in 2015. I'm in. I'm in. Thank you, man. Thanks, Randy. Thank you. Congratulations. See you. Thank you.